and thank you for joining me. My name is Elizabeth Summers, and we're going to take the next few minutes to investigate the different archives that can be used for looking at and analyzing settler colonial. Now, just to give a brief recap, settler colonialism has been described as a subcategory of colonialism. Now, the argument that many historians have is that settler colonialism really should be of its own category. And kind of the founding father of this is Lorenzo Verasini, and he describes settler colonial as colonialism. And the biggest difference between colonialism is that of the end result. And the goal is to rid the land of the indigenous people. Now, this can be debated as far as what does that mean, getting rid of? Are we annihilating people? Are we destroying them? And the conversation does turn to genocide. However, there are similarities for, for certain, but the key is what if we were looking at it through the eyes of a simulation? And that's going to be our path that we're going to be looking at this evening. So, the three examples that we're going to be using here is North America, Australia, and South Africa, and the different archives found in these countries, and how to uh, determine what is useful in investigating this theory. So the three archives that I have chosen to research are the Carlisle Indian School Digital Resource, the National Archives of Australia, and the National Archives and Records Services of South Africa. To begin with, we're sticking here to the United States. And the United States, one of the key schools that was in use by the North American government was the Carlisle Indian Industrial School. Now, to give a little background, in 1819, the uh, U.S. Congress determined that the Native Americans needed their assistance. And it was for the purpose of providing against the further decline and final extinction of the Indian tribes. Now, if we're focusing on settled colonialism, we can argue, wait a minute, we're not looking at the extinction. But in fact, we are. This was the Congress's way of stating that, well, we're not really exterminating them, but when you look at the next part of this, we really are, because what we're doing is we're introducing them to the habits and arts of what we deem as civilized. And so essentially we are eradicating, we are annihilating this culture. And thus, this is the tool that they used. So the Carlisle Indian Industrial School was in operation from 1878 to 1918. And when we are looking at this digital archive, we see much information as this school was one of the leading schools designed to civilize the Native Americans by taking their children and teaching them skills designed to assimilate them into the American culture. And the American government went through extreme lengths to have documentation of these different schools. And this resource that we're looking at is an independent resource, uh, digi digital archive. There are other archives that we'll discuss here in a moment to uh, further investigate the American Indian boarding schools. But for the purpose of this argument, we're just simply looking at this one. And within this digital archive, there are images, newspaper articles, student records, and regular government documents, lists and ledgers, uh, describing daily activities, describing the children that come in, where they come in from, there's so much information that can be gleaned from this website. And this is just one digital website and archive. And again, what it really proves is when we're looking at settler colonialism and the documentation of a simulation, the United States definitely takes the gold in the comparison between Australia and South Africa. We have documented so much that we can find these documents and they have been digitized for the most part, and it shows the process of the settlers coming in and annihilating, yes, their culture and creating something else. And the idea was to get rid of the indigenous people in the United States. So our takeaway here is that, as I stated, the American government put in a great deal of effort to fully document what was happening to the Native Americans. Another of mindset that we see is that 
they did not consider that to be wrong. It was, as we saw in the beginning, them declaring that they're helping the Native Americans to civilize them. And so from con congressional decrees to orders of removal, school information, this process of assimilation is extremely well documented. And the information that we can then see is this other side of the story of settler colonialism. And through the documentations of Native Americans, you can also find letters and journal articles to, to see the, the pain and the sadness of a culture losing its youth. And why we talk about this is because history is about listening and understanding both sides. It's the same with settler colonialism because it provides concrete evidence for the mentality of both the settlers and the indigenous people. And just a further note here, other resources and, and digital archives are, can be found on the National Archives, Native American Heritage, the Smithsonian Museum has a National Museum of the American Indian, and Berkeley Library from the University of California also has archives. So again, we definitely see North America being one of the number one uh, spots in digital archives and when it comes to settler colonialism and understanding the indigenous people involved in this. Now, the National Archives of Australia. So unlike the American government, the Australian government did not document what happened to the Aborigine people and the laws that were passed. Yes, we can go in and find legislation laws, but as far as documenting the Aborigines, documenting the different laws that were passed, whether it was schooling or even the allowing of hunting Aborigine uh, men, women, and children, this is very evident in their national archives that they didn't document it. However, in the second half of the 20th century, we do see Australia trying to rectify their mistakes. And because of that, we see the National Archives of Australia having a records about first Australians. And they do hold records that are relevant to Aborigines and the original first Australians. But again, as far as if we're comparing it to the North American government system, this one is not nearly as complete, but still a useful tool. And so as we are looking at the Australian government and their national archives, and we're discussing settler colonialism, the National Archives of Australia provide the basic information for settlers as far as how they settled, where they settled, and why they settled. For most of the years, they flat out ignored the indigenous people and acted as if they weren't there. And this complies with the methodology and philosophy of colonialism and settler colonialism. So where does this research take the researcher? For one, it actually takes them to physically going to Australia and traveling to Australia. This is definitely an opportunity to go and create, uh, investigate. There are digital files for sure, and we found digital files on the National Archives, but it's not enough to fully see and understand how settler colonialism affected the Aborigine people and to properly outline. It is definitely a good start, but to create a well-rounded well understanding, a trip to Australia may be needed for better understanding. Now, the National Archives and Record Services of South Africa. The interesting thing about this is that South Africa really had a major disadvantage due to majority of their documents not being digitized. And the reasoning for this is when we look at South Africa, majority of their works are from 1990 and above. So we don't see the history of the Native people in South Africa, which does make sense because the legislation has is, is fairly new and so it makes sense why their archives are very 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 limited in what they what has become digitized and when we look at the legislation framework we see again you can see the highlighted numbers here most of this is from 1990 and above and so settler colonialism this information does not help show how settlers obtain their goal of riddance to the indigenous people yet they do highlight one important part of their archives. And the hidden gem 
so to speak, of South Africa is oral history. This nation has lived through native oppression and they're still there to tell their story. So historians know that laws that allowed settler colonialism to override the country, it's the other side of settler colonialism, the native stories to balance out this theory. And this is where we see the research going. And so our takeaway here is, uh, with South Africa, it's a new administration when comparison to Australia and North America, and they come in at a disadvantage with their primary sources because they haven't been digitized yet or even found. But once again, that leaves room for great investigation and yes, for the researcher to travel to South Africa. And one of the greatest tools that a historian can use is the interview tactic. Many people who have experienced the native oppression are still alive and have stories that need to be told. And so we see oral history and the transcriptions of those conversations play a key role in understanding the whole picture of settler colonialism. We see how the end results of eliminating the indigenous population was present in this nation. So here's our final archival takeaway. When we're comparing North America, Australia, and South Africa, absolutely North America has the best resources that are available online. There's always improvements where you can go to local historical societies and find records, letters, uh, regional laws and decrees that have not been digitized as of yet, but for the most part, North America definitely takes the cake on this one. Australia definitely has a good start, and there's room for improvement. Their focus has been on restoration towards the Indigenous people, which is valid and is needed in regards to settler colonialism, but understanding the Aborigines and what they went through before this, and the idea of interviews and and going and finding the resources in Australia is, is a good uh, place for improvement. And as far as South Africa, they are really lacking on their resources, but it is an opportunity for historians to seek them out. And with the newer legislation and uh, and government, there is a need to tell their story and and see what the natives have gone through. And they're still there. So we see oral history becoming a major uh, tool to be used. And finally, here's our, our official bibliography. So thank you very much for listening here as we uh, took a dive into archival studies for settler colonialism. It's an interesting theory and one that I personally feel does need to be separated from colonialism because of that end result of annihilating, getting rid of the indigenous people. But it's interpretation, and this is where archival research becomes key. How you interpret the people's stories, how you interpret the letters, the legislation acts, the actual actions of the different races that have been involved in this. So thank you again for listening, and I hope maybe it helped you better understand settler colonialism.